I'm working with a 24 by 36 inch canvas. This is a linen canvas. And uh, as you can see, there was another painting underneath of this one uh, of an old truck. And it, it was pretty good. It was an okay painting, but it just uh, wasn't turning out like I wanted. So I uh, blocked this out just with some uh, white paint and a lot of that truck showed through. So. Now I'll begin starting the, uh, <laughs> the new painting. I have the uh, truck that I'm going to paint sketched out there on pencil. And I'm um, starting with my dark colors first. I always start with my darks and work towards my lights. I am using oils today. And, and the main reason I start with my darks and work towards my lights is once I put any light colors in there, if you try and put dark colors over them, especially in oils, the, uh, you just can't get those dark, dark colors because it mixes with the white. So I always start with my darks first. Now painting like this isn't exactly a paint by number, but in, in other ways it sort of is because uh, I really have to just start filling in these areas. Uh, I have to be careful of my, my colors, my values, and so on. But uh, it's not like a landscape painting where I can get really loose with it. Uh, this has to be fairly accurate, so it's basically just filling in the areas there with, the, uh, with the, what I think is <laughs> the appropriate colors. The truck is the most important part of this painting, so of course I'm starting with the truck and working outwards from that. I'm trying something a bit different with this painting than most of my other paintings. Now I call these Route 66 paintings, and I have a, a lot of these paintings of these old trucks, and basically they were they could have been on Route 66. Gives that sort of feel. Uh, but on this particular painting, uh, I'm trying to do this very sort of a dreary uh, yellow glow look. So it's sort of a rainy. I don't know, rainy evening kind of a, a painting. So uh, it is a little bit different than the other Route 66 paintings I'm, I've done. Uh, well, while I'm talking about that, I'll show you a few of those Route 66 paintings now. This isn't all of the Route 66 paintings I've done, but it's a, a pretty good example of them. And some of these paintings, like this one right here, and this next one, and the next one, are, were all done at a place called Hacksbury, and it was on Route 66 in Arizona. Pretty neat place. We actually did one of our PBS television shows in Hackberry at uh, one of these places. And uh, of course our show is called Painting and Travel with Roger and Sarah Bansmer, and we're on about 320 PBS stations across the country. So look us up on your local PBS station. I'm starting to block in this background now, and as I said earlier, this is a very subdued gray painting, a lot of grays. But I'm going to have that yellow light on this the edge of this truck and in the background. So uh, one reason this yellow is going to show up so nicely is because of all the sort of non-colors around it, all these grays around it. And that will make this yellow look even brighter than it would otherwise. If I had a lot of other colors around it, uh, you know, bright greens or anything like that, this yellow truck would not stand out nearly as much. I do get comments from time to time with people saying, you know, I don't want the time lapse. I, I want to see <laughs> every stroke and everything you put on that. but. Really, these paintings do take a while, and that, that would just take too much, uh, too much time, and I think everybody would just tune out if that were the case. It's always a lot of fun adding detail to paintings like this, or any painting, but it's really not the most important part of the painting. The important part of the painting is the very first part of this painting, where I started to lay in and block in these large areas. If those large areas aren't blocked in properly, then no amount of detail will help uh, fix a painting that isn't, isn't laid in to begin with, with those big shapes, big tones, 
big colored areas. And like I said, everybody wants to see me do these details, but really trust me, it's, it's definitely not the most important part of the painting. Actually, I tried to do that on the painting that I just painted over, uh, which you saw at the very first part of this video. It just didn't look right from the very start. And I started to add a lot of details and everything, thinking I could pull it through. But, you know, you just can't do it. Just couldn't do it. So at, at one point in the painting, I said, you know, I'm just going to gonna cut my losses on this and try another one. And that's what I'm doing. This painting has a real ghostly, almost Halloween sort of look. Uh, <laughs> not trying to make it look like any kind of a Halloween painting, but it is sort of a, a wet fall looking scene where there is a, a bit of fog in the area. And I'm trying to make this look really damp, cold, and a little bit foreboding, you know? It's just something I would try that was different from those other Route 66 paintings. So now is the time to start adding all the little details. So I went on the web, looked up antique signs, and now I'm uh, using some reference photos I found on the web to put in some old old signage in the area. I know I grew up as a sign painter, so uh, I'm quite familiar with lettering, which is, I guess, an advantage. All these signs are very bright in color, but of course I had to really knock them down because they're in this uh, subdued area. So anything white had to be brought down with uh, probably a bit of uh, maybe burnt umber and ultramarine blue to gray the white down. So I'm working on those right now. I put this shell sign in and I pretty much completed it. But ultimately I, I didn't like the shell sign. <laughs> it just didn't, didn't feel right to me. So I blocked it out, and then you can see right there, I put in an STP sign. I'm never afraid to uh, paint something out that I've put in there. You know, it doesn't take all that long. And if I can improve the painting, that's what I do. Then I, uh, on the web, I looked up that old gas pump, and I put that in there. Just wanted to fill up that area because it was kind of blank, and now I'm putting in an old car there. You can see the radiator and a few fenders and that's a pretty much derelict automobile. Didn't want too much detail in that but just enough to have something in the background there to uh, fill up that area with some interesting items. And here's one more sign I put in right at the, the top here. It was a, a mobile, mobile oil sign. Now I'm painting wet over wet on this, but uh, the paint isn't all that thick, so I'm able to do this in, in one go. And of course I added that light back there in the very background. That, that's what's casting the yellow light on the truck. Well, that pretty much finishes this painting. Leave a comment, subscribe, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye-bye.